Hello friends and welcome to Roar Church Texarkana. If you want more information about anything that we do, go to jojodawson.net. You can find our YouTube videos, our blogs, where to sow, how to partner with us, any of that information. We hope that you enjoy this message. This morning we're going to get into the Word. we got three different people speaking on refreshing from the Lord. So we're going to start with Jeff McFarland. And he's, he's getting married next month. Come on. <laughs> We are excited about that. Uh, just as we, we jump in this morning, uh, today I want to talk about something. This, this idea of refresh is something that's, that's very uh, dear and true to me, and, and I'll really kind of delve into that, why it is and uh, why I love the refreshing of the Lord. But uh, today I, I just want to start off with, with what is refreshing. Because I believe that we live in an hour where we have to live a lifestyle of refreshing. We have to continually be in a place to where we are in the presence of God and we are continually going after him and he is consistently and constantly refreshing us. Because there, we find times where we just get caught up in life and, and, and there's times where we do that, where we get caught up in life and, and we don't really pursue God the way that we know we should and those times just kind of get away from us. But today, I just believe we're going to lay a foundation first and then Michelle and Joe are going to come up and, and we're just going to see God refresh us. Amen? Amen. So the word refresh, it means to restore strength. And animation to something. It means to restore, and this is what I want to hone in on, maintain by renewing supply. Refreshing is to maintain by renewing supply. God continually renews us, our supply, what he gives us, what he puts inside of us. And, and today, and I challenge you, today I believe that that's the Holy Spirit. He's put the Holy Spirit inside of us, and he's continually renewing that spirit that's inside of us. It's the same spirit that rose Christ from the grave. It's that same spirit that is continually moving in and through us. And I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but in Acts 3 and 19, it was a verse uh, JoJo used last week. It says that times of refreshing may come. Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out that the times of refreshing may come from the Lord. So what was there? The first thing that the Lord, or that, that Peter here said that, that the people were to do is first they were supposed to repent, right? So what is repenting? Repenting is to turn away from whatever has ensnared you, whatever was behind you, whatever's supposed to be behind you, your past, anything that's not meant to point you towards the ways of God, that's what we're supposed to repent from. So repent, therefore, then turn to God. So repentance is turning, but this he reminds us to turn to God, put our gaze, put our focus on God. And so when we do that, we end up being refreshed, amen? It says that times of refreshing may come. So first, we repent, right? And I've got all these notes about repentance and and restoration and turning to God, but there's something that I just want to hone in on. Let's just go ahead and settle that right now we're just going to live repentant lifestyles, right? That we're going to be ones who are right now repenting of anything. As I'm speaking, if the Lord brings something up, let's just repent from it, right? Let's just be done with it right now in, in the middle of this message because this full thing's not about repentance, but that's where it starts. It starts in the place of repentance. So let's just right now, if those things that the Lord brings up to your remembrance, Let's just be done with it. Those things that constantly go after your mind, let's just be done with it right now. And so, and let's turn to God right now. In this moment, we're turning to God and we're saying, God, do with me as you would please. Amen? So, how I came to this, this idea of, of living a lifestyle of, of refreshing is I used to say this. I used to say, God, I want to live a lifestyle of repentance. And then... I thought about that in my processing mind about living a lifestyle of repentance. That would mean I'm constantly having to turn away from something. That, I'm con that I'm, I've turned towards something that God's called me away from, and then I'm having to go, I end up going right back around to it, and then I've got, if I'm living a lifestyle of repentance, I'm having to kind of, it's almost like I've created a cycle for myself. Does that make sense? And so this is what the Lord brought me to. And there was a time where I was reading I love these commentaries and, and different things and, and looking up 
just different words in the Bible. And when you look up refresh and you, you lay it out in the Bible, it, it talks about how refreshing it comes through music. It comes through uh, the different things that, that the Lord does in his presence. It, it comes from uh, just being in his presence. And so that's where the refreshing comes. But there was one commentary that, that I, I looked at that it talked about how the Holy Spirit is the refreshing. It used the Holy Spirit as talking about how the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit is one that's been refreshing since day one. In Genesis 1, it talks about how he was brooding over the earth. As, as the earth was coming into formation, the Holy Spirit was brooding over it. And when that happened, he was refreshing the earth. And so even then, it talks about in Moses, Moses in Deuteronomy 32, he used a metaphor in Deuteronomy 32 where it talks about something that's brooding over the earth. And one of the things that the pictures that he gives is an eagle. And an eagle will soar and it will kind of hone in on one area that it's, it's either trying to attack or a lot of times it's over its nest. And so the eagle's hovering over a nest and that's because ultimately the eggs are in the nest and the eggs are getting ready to um, hatch and, and, and birth. But the interesting picture here is that the eagle is brooding over the nest just like the Holy Spirit does. And why is that? Because the eagle is setting the atmosphere. The eagle is setting the atmosphere over the, the young that is about to hatch, that's about to be born. And so that's what the Holy Spirit does for us. That's the refreshing that comes to us when we continually live a lifestyle of refreshing, the Holy Spirit broods over us. And I think sometimes what's happened is we, we end up like I was at one point in my life where I was trying to live a lifestyle of repentance instead of a lifestyle of refreshing. And when you live in that lifestyle of refreshing, the Holy Spirit is constantly brooding over you because he's preparing what he's doing inside of you so he can do things in you and then through you. But if you get caught up in that other side, sometimes when confusion comes, we get caught up in, in having to repent from it. Rep oh, not from it, but having to repent just because we've get, gotten off track. But I believe today that we're done with that. We're not done with repentance. If, if something happens, repent and move forward. But I think a lot of times what we do is we end up backing up and stay in that place instead of saying, Lord, refresh me. God, I need your refreshing. Lord, I need your presence. And so that is why, and this is something that we as a ministry have, have preached a lot, is Matthew 6 and 6. That is the place where you have to be. You have to be in that place where you're constantly pursuing the Lord for yourself, and you're constantly getting into the Word of God for yourself, because that's where that refreshing comes. And it's a lot of times, uh, Joe has told me in the past, a lot of times that's where you know that there's been disconnection from the Holy Spirit. There's been disconnection from your relationship with God is when somebody starts to begin to just kind of slide back. And so that's something that we always have to do. But going back to Deuteronomy 32, that eagle metaphor that I was using, Deuteronomy 32 says he found him in a desert land and in a wasteland, a howling wilderness. He encircled him. He instructed him, he kept him the apple of his eye. And verse 11 says, as an eagle stirs up the nest and hovers, hovers over its young, spreading out its wings, taking it up, carrying them on its wings. It's the same picture that we get from the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit being one that hovers over us, begins to nurture us, begins to just brood over us so that we become all that we're called to do. Amen? So this is what happens when we continually live a lifestyle of refreshing one, Acts 1 8 tells us that we get a power and a witness. The power of the Holy Spirit comes upon us when we're living this lifestyle. So, Acts 1 8, it says, But you who will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. The second thing that happens is growth happens. We saw that in Acts 2, the church grew, the people grew. In that moment when the Holy Spirit came upon them, they began to walk in more maturity. They began to understand what Peter was saying in, in his words. When in, in the first of Act 3, when they, they saw the lame man uh, sitting at the, the temple, and then they raised him up, they began to understand what Jesus was talking about. So their understanding was increased, so they began to mature. So there's a growth that happens when we live in that place of refreshing 
The third thing that happens is restoration. Acts 3.21 says, Heaven must receive him until the time comes for God to restore everything, as he had promised long ago through his holy prophets. So a full restoration of all things, those things that have felt lost, if, if purpose has felt lost at one point, that refreshing is what brings that back. That refreshing of the Holy Spirit brings those things that have seemed once lost. It brings your purpose to full fruition. It brings destiny to full fruition. And it, it brings family members that have been believed for to full fruition. It brings healing to full fruition. Amen. So those things that are meant to be restored are fully restored. The fourth thing it brings is blessings. Acts 3, 25 and 26 says, And you are heirs of the prophets of the covenant of God made with your fathers. He said to Abraham, Through your offspring, all peoples on the earth will be blessed. When God raised up his servant, this is verse 26 of Acts 3, he sent him first to you to bless you by turning each of you from your wicked ways. So there's a blessing that God has come to us, and we've turned from those things that we once did, and that we live this lifestyle. Amen? The fifth and last thing is he gives us boldness. Boldness to do God's mandate over our lives. Acts 4 and 13 says, When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. And that's one thing that I always want people to say of me, that they know that I've been with Jesus. They know that there's a relationship with Jesus Christ and myself, and, it, and it's one that can be followed. It's one that can be, that I want to fully go after all that God has for me. Amen? And, and that's the same thing that we want for you. And so uh, this is what it's like. When we've gone from that place, we've repented, we've turned to God, and we've said, God, let the times of refreshing come. Let the times of refreshing continually come. Amen. Amen. Here's Michelle. Amen. I love following Jeff. I'll be following him for the rest of my life. Amen. Well, I actually had a dream three nights ago about refreshing. And I had been praying about this. Joe had asked us to speak. And I immediately was like, refreshing? It's really hard for me sometimes to stay like in one particular subject. And so I started to pray about it, and then the Lord gave me this dream. And in the dream, I was running around doing chores, and the dream shifts several times. I was doing, like, chores like laundry and housework and things like that. Then I was running errands, like, grocery shopping and doing things I needed to do. Then I was working at the elementary school that I was working at, and then the dream shifted again, and I was ministering to people. And then the dream shifts again, and I was trying to fit all of my money, like I had all my money in cash in these little boxes, in these shelves. And the whole time throughout all of those situations, one of my coworkers from work was following me around. And it wasn't as strange as it sounds. Things in dreams sometimes don't make sense. But it was totally natural in the dream for my coworker to be following me around. And it's this real sweet lady. She's a teacher. And um, we don't have any kind of like real relationship or anything, but she's just, she has a very sweet spirit and she loves the Lord. And so in the dream, she's following me around and the whole time she's trying to help me do whatever it is that I was trying to do in the dream, but I wouldn't let her. I was like, no, it's okay. I've got it. This is my responsibility. I just kept like hindering her from trying to help me. And then the dream shifts again. And I was at Camp Ramp in Hamilton, Alabama And there's a creek there, and it's this beautiful plot of land. And it was fall, like it is now, and all the leaves were changing, and the wind was blowing, and there was leaves on the creek and all this. And I was standing on the bank, and I saw myself. And I was standing in the water, and Jesus was standing there, and he was trying to pour water over me and, like, get me to go down, almost like being baptized. But he also had a bowl of water pouring it over me. And But I'm watching all of this happen as if it's not me, but I know it's me. And I'm standing there, and my coworker is standing there next to me. And I turned and looked at my coworker, like almost, I didn't say anything, but almost to ask her, why, why is this happening? I'm confused. And she very kindly, as she would probably do in real life, put her hand on my shoulder and looked me straight in the eye. And she said, Do you not believe that God wants to refresh you? And so then the dream shifts one last time. And I'm in a car, and I'm in the passenger seat, and my coworker was driving. And there was just this overwhelming peace and just reassurance of knowing wherever she was taking me, everything was already taken care of. And all I had to do was sit back and enjoy the ride. 
And so I wake up from this dream, and I actually woke up late that morning. And so I kind of like quickly journal it down and pray in the spirit for a minute, and then I went and got ready, and I went to work. And as I was praying over this, even as we were gone this weekend, the Lord started sort of unfolding this revelation that he was trying to speak to me through the dream. So I'm going to kind of unpack that. So in the dream, I'm doing different things. And my coworker in the dream, I believe, represents the Holy Spirit. Because he is the one who co-labors with us in our lives. And I think a lot of times we know that the Holy Spirit is always with us. But I think, I know I'm guilty of this, resisting his help. And he is the helper. When Jesus talked about the Holy Spirit with the disciples, he said, I am sending you the helper. He didn't say a 911 friend. He didn't say somebody that only if you really need him, ask for him. He said, I am sending you the helper. And I love that Jesus didn't specify what the Holy Spirit could help us with. And I really feel like what this dream was, was an invitation, not only to be aware of the Holy Spirit's presence, but to allow him to come and help, even in the mundane. And I think that that's so powerful. And even as they were singing about the love of God this morning, there are areas, and even as Autumn was prophesying, there are areas in my life and in our lives that we're keeping the Holy Spirit from ministering to us because we don't think it's like a sacred activity. Does that make sense? The Holy Spirit, want, he's, he's already there with us all the time, but he wants to be there with you and minister to you as you're running around and being a mom and a wife or a dad or as you're working at your job. How many of you would love to be overwhelmed by the Holy Spirit when you're working? Yes, please, God. <laughs> He wants to help you figure out what to do with your finances. He wants to help you when you're walking in your calling and ministering to people. And so many times I think we we get burnt out or we get worn out or we grow weary because the Holy Spirit's right there and he's wanting to help, but we're not letting him. Then as the dream shifted... And I was at Williams Creek. I think the reason why I was seeing myself, and I wasn't myself, but I was, was because I don't think that that dream was just for me. Obviously, I wouldn't be sharing it with you, but I didn't think it was also for everybody in this room. And I think that even as a church, he's calling us to not only be aware of his presence, but to let him help us in everything. Because that's what what we're after is advancing the kingdom of God. And what we're after is a lifestyle of refreshing and revival as a people. And we can't do that if we don't invite the Holy Spirit into every single area. And I was standing in the river and he was trying to refresh me, obviously. And I was so resistant to it. And I, I, I don't even fully know in the dream why, but I think it represents every single person in this room. Each of us have reasons and excuses and, and things that we've made up in our mind that we think are keeping us from God refreshing us. Well, I didn't read last week, so that's why I'm not refreshed. Well, I didn't get up early enough to pray, so he doesn't want to refresh me. And we have all of these excuses for why God won't come and refresh us. It's not about you. It's who he is. He just wants to help That's who he is. That's why Jesus sent the Holy Spirit, was to be the helper. And and I have constantly been pursuing being aware of his presence, but I feel like God is calling us deeper into not only being aware of his presence, but to allow his presence to come in and invade every situation. Amen? We can become busy, and we can try to be responsible and try to be mature spiritually. And I love what Melissa Helser says. I was recently listening to one of her podcasts, and she was talking about maturity as a believer, which is obviously our goal. And she was talking about how in the natural, as we mature, we're supposed to become more and more independent, right? So when babies are born, they're completely dependent. And as you grow older, you become more and more independent. You can take care of yourself. But it's the opposite 
in the Spirit. Maturity doesn't look like as you continue to walk with the Lord, you become more and more independent. It's you become more and more dependent on Him as you mature. And one of the examples that she used was she said this, Jesus was our perfect example of how we're supposed to lead our lives, right? And how he led his life on the earth. And he was the perfect picture of a mature son. And mature sons, like Jesus, are completely and totally dependent on the Father. That means we're dependent on him to go to Walmart. We're dependent on him to be a mom. We're dependent on him to be a wife. We're dependent on him to be a dad or or a lawyer or a doctor or whatever it is. We are fully dependent on him, and that's what makes us mature. And that's been so hard for me because I'm constantly in pursuit of becoming more and more mature. Spiritual maturity is one of the things that I'm constantly asking the Lord to do in me. And it's so much more difficult to just sit back, like in the last part of my dream, and allow the Lord to just take me wherever he wants us to go. But if we can surrender to that, it can be the most simple and most glorious. I remember sitting in the car in the dream and thinking, this is great. I don't have to worry about anything. I don't have to navigate. I don't have to pay for gas. I don't have to figure out where we're going. I don't have to figure out what we're going to do when we get there. All I had to do was sit back and trust. And I really feel like that's the invitation of the Lord this morning. And that's where refreshing comes, is when we're completely and totally dependent on the Holy Spirit, where we say, yes, Holy Spirit, come in and help me. That's who you are. And that's where refreshing will come, is when we just let him come in. And I want to just kind of wrap this up with this scripture. John 4, 13 and 14, Jesus is talking to the woman at the well, and this is what he says. Jesus answered her, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, natural water. But whoever drinks the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. But the water that I give him will become in him a spring of water, satisfying his thirst for God, welling up, continually flowing and bubbling within him even to eternal life. As we accept this invitation of of the refreshing of the Holy Spirit, then in us, the Holy Spirit becomes a well. And everybody around us can start to drink from that well if we can just surrender to being dependent on the Lord. He is the fountain that we must continually drink from. Because as we drink from him, it will overflow and it will impact the people around us. Amen. Here's Apostle Joe. Amen. The Lord is good. I'm excited about what God is doing. And the Lord recently gave me a a, a prophetic word. And it was to tell people, it was for me and then for other people, to tell people over the the next two months, steward your, your year well, but get yourself in position for 2018. The Lord started speaking to me personally about some things that he was going to do in my life. And I'm, I was like a kid on Christmas when God started telling me what I was going to do. I'm like, really? I'm going to get to do that? And I was like, are you serious? Me? And the Lord started telling me some stuff. And the Lord said, now, you know what's coming in 2018. But what you need to do is for the next two months, go deeper and deeper and deeper in me and allow me to speak, allow me to pull out. You ever seen anybody on, when they're on an operating table? You know what they do? They just lay there. And, they, and, and you, hey, Doc, a little, little more on this. Hey, little Doc, a little easier over here. No, you're, you're just shh, silencio. And you're laying there and the, the Lord is going to be speaking. So over the next two months, I encourage you to fast and pray and seek the Lord. Because here's why. When there's a prophetic declaration, all of hell is going to come against you. Okay? So you better make sure you are ready. Because 2018 is going to be a remarkable year for so many people. Now, Tuesday night, last Tuesday night was what, what some people call Halloween. But as I refer to it, it's Reformation Day. It was the day that Martin Luther got so mad when he went to church. I don't know if y'all have ever got mad going to church. But he went home and wrote down 95 problems with the church of his day. And he went over to a door, 
put it up on the door, put a nail in it, and said, there you go, church, we got some problems. Well, if you study it, why was Martin Luther mad at the church? Why? I'm glad you asked. Because there was witchcraft in the church. Witchcraft in the church? Witchcraft in the church. You know, what is witchcraft? Rebellion against what God says. Rebellion against what, what the Lord says. You know, and this is why he got mad and he People, he got tired of people being confused, and he said, guys, there's so much more in the Word that we're not seeing in the church. And so, to, you know, Tuesday we celebrated 500, 500 years ago, Martin Luther stood up for the Protestant Reformation, and he said, I've had enough. In my region, we're going to see the manifested presence and power of God. And they looked at him and said, you're crazy. We can't have that in church. People... Why do you go to church if we can't have what the Bible says? That's why we do what we do. We serve God, and, and God gave us the Bible and said, this is how you live your life. And Martin Luther said, I'm tired of it. Everybody, you know who came against him? It wasn't the, the sinners. It was the church. Because they wanted to stop this man that said there's more to life than what we have. And so when the Lord called us to do Roar Church 11 Weeks ago, and we launched it in basically 12 days, the Lord said, I want a church where people can come and be refreshed. I remember the Lord told my bride about a year ago, 18, two, three years ago, I'm not good with time, but a while back, that I want y'all to build a place where my presence is known, where my power is known, that what we do are going to have two big pillars for the Lord, the power and the presence of God, that people can come in and get the presence of the Lord. Amen. I'm excited about it because this is what is coming. And then the Lord spoke to me strongly about this right here. There's three things that have been removed from the American church by large. The first one was the removing of the Holy Spirit. And a lot of times, you know, seeker friendly is my pet peeve. And, and, and people say, well, you got to remove the Holy Spirit so people can feel comfortable. What in the world do you think heaven's about to be like? I hope they don't water down anything in heaven. I want it all. And, and removing of the Holy Spirit. And all of a sudden, I got in a time where I started weeping because witchcraft has came in and lied to the church. Shh, quieting God down. Holy Spirit, shh, have reverence. He's like, reverence? God's the one who sent me. And I'm going to move amongst the midst of the people. Shh, let me talk about God. I know more than you do. And we're talking about the Holy Spirit. There is nothing that can, it's better when you're sitting in your prayer room by yourself and the Holy Spirit speaks to you. Whew, that's what it's about. And, and, the, and the Lord was speaking to me that the removing of the Holy Spirit was one of the biggest things that happens in churches. They remove the presence of God. Now, this is what Jesus said. Jesus said, guys, it's better that I go be at the right hand of the Father and God's going to send the Holy Spirit. The church says, thank you, God, for the second gift, but we don't want it in the church. This is where witchcraft has came in the church. And the Lord wants his church back. 2018 is going to be a powerful year for the church of America. The, the church of America. So the removing of the Holy Spirit. Do you think God intended that to come in? Do you think God said, I got a great idea. We're going to tell a huge portion of the churches in America to remove the Holy Spirit that I sent. I know I gave it to you, but I'm just kidding. We're going to take it out. No, 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 no. That's witchcraft in the church. What is witchcraft? It is rebellion. The Bible says in 1 Samuel 15, for rebellion as is the sin of witchcraft. And the Lord is wanting people, people to be full of the power of God. And even in our day-to-day -day lives, when we're not refreshed, we're not going to refresh anybody. Last night around 1030, I was outside in my backyard and I was just talking to the Lord and it was a beautiful night. I'm not going to tell that part of the story. Um, but I told my wife a story last night. She said, Joe. And, and it was, I was out there with the Lord and I was having a moment of just weeping and spending time with God. And I said, God, you are so big and you have so much. Who would not want to profess all that you have? And he's like, the majority of my children. And I said, God, but daily I want to be so refreshed that when I go anywhere, people are going to see my burning, fiery passion for you. 
And an atheist would be like, I don't know exactly what you have, but I want it. When he consumes you and daily refreshes you, you don't even have to say anything. It just takes over everything. It takes over every part of your life. And the Lord is bringing a refreshing to his church. And, and, and churches that limit the power of the Holy Spirit, I pray for them. I pray for them and I say, God, let your spirit flow in there. Let their ministers catch on fire and let them have a fresh revelation for you let them i'll drive in other churches parking lots and i'll just prophesy out the word of the lord spirit of god flow in there spirit of god flow in there because it's going to take more than one church to take a city it's going to take numerous churches but when people remove the holy spirit that's why martin luther got mad don't you think it's funny that martin luther had reformation day and they come in with halloween which they say is full of witches for witchcraft to try to silence the church because this is a day that we should celebrate what well, martin luther as an apostle did, is called the church back in order. He called the church back in order and said, church, here's the Bible right here. Here's the Bible right here. Come on, let's get back. We're going back to Eden. We're going back to the days when, whenever the Lord called us. You know, we're living in a land of plenty. Come on. You know, I'm so tired of people living in poverty. There's no poverty in heaven. Why do we have a poverty? I can't do this. I can't do that. If God called you to, he's going to do it. And we got to get the poverty mindset. We got to have a refreshing in our heart. We got to have a refreshing in our mind. Now, let's get to point number two. We're going to base all of this on Ephesians 2 and 20. And the church was built on the teaching of the apostles and the words given by the prophets and Jesus being the chief cornerstone. We're going to start with the prophets. Um, A a guy named Jim Hennessy wrote an amazing book years ago called No More Cotton Candy. And he said, let me tell you how when a church gets into witchcraft, the prophet who used to sit on the front row is moved to the back row. Numerous churches over America has moved the prophets from the, the front to the back. Why is that? Here's why. And please hear my heart. I'm not being critical. I'm just teaching. Because they feel convicted when they know the man or woman of God can walk up and say the word of the Lord and it's going to mess up their agenda for the service. Therefore, what they do is they remove them of the back and they say, you cannot speak the word of the Lord. Well, God wants the word of the Lord brought out. That's why we love the prophetic flowing, but because it just flows. And I love during worship when, when, when they're leading worship and Amanda starts singing her prophetic songs and, and then my, my wife comes up and releases the prophetic word and the different people come in. Re, the prophet, prophetic word is refreshing. The prophetic word is hit you. The prophetic word is just flowing. And, and the worship is coming, like Jeff was saying, and it's just flowing. And then like Michelle was saying, sometimes we just sit there and the refreshing comes. God never refreshes anybody that he doesn't want to use. He doesn't refresh you just so you can be, you know, you don't go take a shower to say, I'm going to sit home for the next three days. No, you take a shower because you're going out. You're going to go out on a day with your spouse. You're going to go hang out or, or go next Saturday night to revival meeting with Jeremy Gibson, 7 p.m. right here. You're taking a shower for something. You're getting refreshed for something. God is refreshing people for a reason. But what happens in the American church is they're silencing the prophets. They said, I don't want you to speak the refreshing word of the Lord. I don't want you to speak that. But what is going on is they are silencing prophets. Prophets, I'm telling you, God is raising up prophetic people to be mouthpieces. If you are walking in the prophetic, you better get ready because you are about to be used by God at a greater measure. You are, God is calling the, this is is what I feel, it's like heaven, like, hey. God's like, get all the prophets ready. Get all the prophets ready. Those prophetic voices are coming and they're about to be used at a greater measure. Now the third thing is the removal of the apostles. Why do so many people remove or fire or kick out so many apostles? Because they do not tolerate one bit when it comes to the truth. They will not give in to one thing about, well, we need to silence. I'm not silencing nothing. You know, they don't don't give in to anything because they know there's an apostolic foundation that God wants to build upon. This is why when I pray, I say, Lord, I want people in here that that flow in the apostolic, the prophetic, that are intercessors, because, you know, I want to see heaven come to earth. Was worship not just amazing today? Was I was sitting here like, just keep going. It's so anointed. I'm not singing in here, you know, and it was it was good. And so this is why people have removed things. But what you are about to see in America, all over America, you are about to see 
people who are coming in. You're going to see revival hubs in churches and ministries that are coming in with the prophetic, with moves of the Holy Spirit, laying apostolic foundation for people to build on. Because God is speaking over regions. God is speaking over jobs. God is speaking over families. There are some families that are about to start moving in things that they were called to. Amen. Oh, the Lord is good. You know, I love, I keep saying this, but Jesus, and I want us to grab, Jesus said to the apostles and the disciples, it's better that I go away. Now think about this. The Holy Spirit in you, the Holy Spirit in your personal life was so powerful that Jesus said, hey, let's not worry about the video, guys. Let's not worry about it. It's, it's better that, that I go away, that the Holy Spirit comes. And think about it. It's better to have the Holy Spirit then Jesus with us. Jesus said, it's, my time is done. Holy Spirit is coming. It, we need to have such a close, close walk with the Holy Spirit every day of our life. That is what keeps us. That's what refreshes us. That's what sustains us. That's what keeps us going. And every day when you have that time with the Lord, it may be early in the morning or lunch break or late at night. Last night, my wife said she could hear me. I was in my backyard, my head set on, and I was just having the time, and I was just weeping, and you could feel the Spirit of the Lord. And I said, God, this is a refreshing. If we all do that on a daily basis, you are going to walk. And like Jeff said about repentance, every day I say, Lord, if there's any way, if anybody said anything harsh against me, did I, did I take an offense? Did I grab something? What's going on, Lord? Did you, I want to be pure. And what the Lord has been speaking to me, is that over the next few months, please get yourself ready because what's coming in 2018, it's about to be fast. It's about to be fast. It's about to be moving uh, forward. And the Lord's already been speaking to me about my life and what I'm going to do in 2018. And the Lord spoke this to me that everything I give you, if you prioritize your life, you can get it done. But if you are not organized and prioritize your life, you're not going to get it done. And I'm going to give you something and I want it done. So when the Lord gives you something, you're, you're going to have to make sure that you prioritize your life to get it done. And the more that you can prioritize, the more he will give you. And this is going to be a year that you do not want to be missing out on what the Lord is doing. You know, I, I heard a Rick Curry say last weekend, he said, whenever God moves or breaks out somewhere, I might not be the minister, but you're going to see. He said, Rick Curry on, on, on the video, I'm going to be where the Lord is moving and where the Lord is shaking this year. And I just believe it is going to be in Texarkana. There's going to be some big things happening in Texarkana. So get yourself ready. I'm, I believe there's workplaces that are about to be overcome by the power of God. There's about to be some job sites just overtaken by the power of God. I believe that schools are going to have revival amongst the kids. I believe that stuff. I believe this is coming. And what the Lord is doing is wanting a city, wanting a people to say, come Holy Spirit, have your way. Lord, let the apostles rise. Lord, let, let the intercessors arise. Let the pro pro prophets arise. Let the prophetic people arise. Let them arise and let the intercessors come in and let them just, just create a place for the Lord. And don't you ever think that it's not going to come without a fight. So you know what I ought to do one week? I ought to show all my, my messages I get every week. I ought to just, just show you the videos and the hateful things that, that people send me each week. They don't like us. I don't care. You know, because we're going to keep going after the things of the Lord's. 1 Samuel 15, 23, 24. It says, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, for stubbornness as iniquity and idolatry. Because you've rejected the word of the Lord, you've also been rejected from being my king. Now, I'm not going to go too far off into this, but, but if you study out the word of the Lord, you know, this is talking about Samuel. This is Saul and Samuel talking. Saul's like, Samuel... And they were going back and forth. And the prophet, the man of God, Samuel, said, Saul, you've gotten off track. And if you get off track, you're about to be removed from being a king. But if Jesus is the king of kings, there's kings over regions. That there's different people who are called to be intercessors and prophetic and apostolic voices. And what you've got to understand is there are people who in past seasons of our region had mantles and they had, they had keys to gates to open and unlock. But when they fail to open, God will give a key to somebody else, another ministry, another group. And there's about to be gates because all God is doing in Second Chronicles 16 and 9 is he's looking for somebody that says, use me, God. God, I want all that you got. And when people find that, they're like, whoops, we, we, we kind of gave that. And all of a sudden they feel naked. 
because they lost their mantle. You see my key? I, I lost my key. I got a key. I had some apostolic people say, Joe, you've been given a key. I said, that's right. And I'm hanging on to it with dear life. I'm going to super glue it to my hand. I'm not losing it. Because I want to open up the, the things of the Lord. Your will be done. The kingdom of God brought to earth. Signs, wonders, miracles, salvations, healing sweeping through a city. God is looking for people who will bring that. And when the attacks come in, I'm good because I'm refreshed. My heart's clean. And, and when your heart is clean and you're refreshed, when people come up against you with the word, you're like, yeah, I already talked to the Holy Spirit. He didn't say that. And you got to know who you are in God. And when you have good identity in God, you're, you're going to just be able to release the power. Now, here's the thing I have against people removing the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does two things. He is the comforter. And he is the convictor of our sins. You need the Spirit of God to convict you of your sins. And you need the Spirit of God to give you comfort. That is why I really dislike the removal of the Holy Spirit in churches. If you teach them to remove it from the church, you'll also teach them to remove it from their life. I want more, God. I want more of the Holy Spirit in my life. Now, this is the last word that the God gave me this week. This was a good word. I was in prayer and the Lord said, I want to give people an impartation that brings impact. And so I was praying on that. And then, then the Lord spoke another word. He said, I want people to receive my impartation over the next two months to have a maximum impact in 2018. Example, if I give my son Ezra a bike without training wheels on a Saturday morning and Saturday noon, I'm not going to enter that little dude in a bike race. I'm going to give him about two months to learn before daddy gives him a push. Could you imagine me getting him, all right, put him on the bike, no training wheels, son, and push him, and he crashes? I'd feel bad. Um, the thing is, you got to learn. So what God is about to do, in, I hope you're ready for this. You, God is about to unlock something in your heart. You're going to have one of those woo -hoo -hoo moments where, like, God, you just unlocked a dream. You just unlocked purpose. and You just unlocked something. And the Lord said, yeah, I'm going to give you a little bit of time to learn how to operate in this new gift. I'm going to give you time to start operating in this new anointing. Because I don't know if, if, if you'll understand this, but there's times when a new anointing will hit you and you're like, hang on, let me take a seat because I'm not used to this. And because when a new measure comes up on you, you just don't jump up and operate. And it's not like a new coat. It takes you a while to get used to it. And there's some of you that you're about to start, you're about to start learning. Sometimes when people get a deeper level of the prophetic released on their life, they try to jump out and do a Facebook Live and they jump out and they fall or they say something silly. You know, what we have to be smart about is you making one silly action in your life can cost you years of advancement. Hope you got that one. There's time that you can do something that gets so far out in the flesh you can miss your timing and it takes you years to come back from that mistake. It takes you years to be able to build back up from that. You've got to make sure that you are flowing in the impartation that the Lord has given you. But I feel strong in my spirit. Even the first four months of the year is crucial to this ministry. When I say this ministry, this ministry was in Mena, Arkansas last week at, at a women's conference. This ministry is going to be in so many places in the first four or five months. Our ministry is just not our Sunday morning. It's the different um, services we're going to be doing. It's the different nights of intercession and prayer. There's a lot going on. But you are about to receive a fresh impartation from God that is going to help you in a lot of things. These are the things that I've got for the impartation. You're going to receive greater wisdom. You're going to receive greater knowledge. You're going to receive greater understanding. You're, you've been trying to build something and you can't figure it out. And one day you're going to wake up and the Lord says, Here's this key. And you're like, wow, I understand what I'm called to do. I understand how to operate into this. I understand what I am doing. You know, the Bible says that when we study, we show ourselves approved. If God calls you to be a prophetic voice, you probably need to buy a few books on it. If God has called you to build houses, just don't go out and build houses. You might need to go and talk to some people who's been doing it. I always try to put myself around successful people in whatever I'm going for. Before I married, Married my bride over 17 marvelous years ago. I went around some gentlemen who had successful marriages that would marry 20, 30 years, and I got around them. I, whenever we started having children, I got around people who had kids that were very well behaved, and I said, Teach me something. You got to get around people 
So when you identify the impartation that is coming upon your life, you will know, and a lot of people are about to receive their identity. And you know why that's so important? Because I, I, I talk to people, what are you called to do? What he feels inside of you? I don't know. I'm, I'm just a Christian. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that there's gifts. There's five-fold gifts. There's other gifts. There's gifts or talents and abilities. You're just not a believer. You're just not a believer just to sit there. You're called to do something. You're called to create ministry. You're called to entrepreneur something. You're called to intercede. You're called to do something. Now, let me, I love talking about Nehemiah. Understand this. Nehemiah walked into a region, and he was the same as everybody else. So they thought. Nehemiah starts talking, and everybody's looking at him. And all of a sudden, Nehemiah starts building, and Nehemiah starts getting higher. And all of a sudden, the wall is probably about 10 feet tall. Now, the local leaders that had huge authority in the natural were down here, saying, Bal and Tobit. They were looking up. Nehemiah, come down. Nehemiah really had no authority in the natural, but he had all the authority in the supernatural. People are going to be so mad at you because they've got all the authority in the natural, but none in the supernatural. And they're going to be looking up at you. And then whatever you say, they're going to listen. There are some people in here that God is training and raising up your prophetic voice. People that you work for are going to come to you in private. People that your parents, your grandparents, people that, 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 that in the natural you are supposed to look up to, but in the spirit they're looking up to you. God's about to release a powerful anointing. He's about to release an impartation. There are some people you're going to be what we call knowers. You're going to walk into a situation. I had some businessmen ask me some questions one time, and I gave them the answers. They said, have you ever studied this? I said, man, I ain't know what you're talking about. I said, y'all just gave me something. I just, just told you about my logical answer. They said, you were right on point. I said, that's cool. How'd you do that? I said, I don't know. I just, as my five-year-old says, I just know things, Dad. You just know things. Some of you are going to have some wisdom. There's an impartation, I believe, that is coming to you today. And, you know, even over the past two or three weeks, I've been learning how to do things by the Holy Spirit that I could not even explain to you. I'm not going to try because just, just things happen. Things just start happening. And so you're about to receive an impartation. The only time God gives you an impartation is he wants you to use it. This is a powerful impartation that will come. Now, why is the impartation coming? For impact. Don't, don't you ever get a, a, an impartation and hold it for yourself. It's coming so you can impact. And then I was praying, the Lord said, maximum impact. Your life will make maximum impact in 2018 in your family, in your job, in your school, wherever you are at, your life is going to make a maximum. I tell my kids, it, when you're in, in elementary and junior high, when you're out, you're out. You need to make maximum impact on those other kids while you are there. And, 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 and in the job you're in, you may not be there next year or two years or three years. Make maximum impact. And this is going to be a year that I feel that people in here are going to know who you are. You are going to know who you are. And you're going to have some stuff unlocked today. It's just like hindrances, false things you've learned. Words spoken over your life are about to be removed. And God is going to speak a powerful word of impartation. The Bible even says that when teachers teach and preach, when they lay hands, there is an impartation of what they taught. Most people don't, don't release the impartation because if you got what I got and then you're going to lift up. Do you know what God has called me to do? Never quit stopping. I, I'm going to go and grow all the days of my life. And the higher I go, the higher that we go. You should never, you should never stop growing because of your kids. Everybody around you. Some of you are the pastor of your family and don't even know it. Some of you are the pastor on your job site and don't even know it. God is going to bring an impartation today. So we're going to do some fun stuff this morning. We're going to go into worship, but it's going to be different because Amanda and Carmen are about to sing a lot of the songs of the Lord over y'all. Hey, I want y'all to sing the song of the Lord over them, okay? And, and Autumn is going to start prophesying the word of the Lord over y'all. And when you leave today... I am going to believe that you are going to have a fresh encounter and a fresh touch and a fresh impartation from God today.